I'm having a talk with David Harrington, founder of Kronos Quartet. He's in San Francisco somewhere, uh, some tiny little room apparently where he practices a lot. I'm in Santa Barbara. David Harrington and Kronos Quartet are going to be in Santa Barbara, I guess, when, David? Tomorrow? Wednesday? What? Well, we arrive on Wednesday and we're playing on Thursday. That's right. So you'll do probably a master class or something, a little something with the UCSB kids? Yeah, I think we're working with a number of students, and I'm actually doing a DJ session on the Friday in one of the high schools. So, yeah, that's right. Ah, yeah, that made no sense at all to me. You'll maybe chat about that if we have time. Sure. Uh, let's, let me get through the details very quickly so everybody in Southern California has an idea of where Kronos Quartet is going to be, what they're up to. Okay, for those in Santa Barbara, uh, we're talking Campbell Hall, UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara, UCSB Arts and Lectures is the sp sponsor, co-presented co by the UCSB Music Department, Campbell Hall, UCSB, the uh, concert is Thursday, that's this Thursday, a couple, three days from now, November 19th at 7 p.m., so be aware that there's a 7 o'clock startup uh, for that concert. Tickets, 10 bucks through 40 bucks, it's crazy. Uh, Tickets for anybody in Southern California wants to, that wants to come up and catch this concert uh, at Campbell Hall UCSB. The area code for Santa Barbara area uh, tickets is area code 805-893-3535. And I have somewhere your itinerary. Hang on. You want to give it to us because you're going to be around Southern California a little bit, aren't you? Well, we're playing at UCLA. Royce Hall, that's right. Yeah, on Wednesday, and then after that we go up to uh, Santa Barbara. Wow, so you'll have had a little practice? Good. Yeah. This is good. Now, how about let's talk about this program. I started to look at it, and this is not surprising to anyone that knows Kronos Quartet, but I swear I cannot possibly try to pronounce, pronounce a single composer. Tell us about that program coming up. And also, how come it's not just a whole hodgepodge? Is there a sense, an arc to it? Well... You know, one of the things I realized recently as I've been um, meeting lots of musicians, lots of younger musicians, and we're doing a lot of mentoring of groups and composers right now, and one of the things was I didn't know a single woman composer for about three years into the life of Kronos. <laughs> And I thought, you know what? Things have really changed a whole lot in the last 39 years since then. And the first compo female composer to write a work for Kronos was named Anne Silsby. And Anne was a professor at Cornell University. So when Kronos was out in that part of the country for several years, first we started in Seattle from 73 to 75. Then we went out to upstate New York until the spring of 77 and then we came to San Francisco. Well during those two years I, I finally began to meet musicians and composers of a lot of different styles and uh, I finally met Ann Silsby. And since that time many women have written pieces for Kronos and we thought let's celebrate this and let's do it in Santa Barbara. We haven't played any of the pieces we're going to play at UCSB. We've never played them there before. So we're going to start with music of Sofia Gubaidulina. Sofia wrote her string quartet number four for the debut that Kronos had in 1994 in the big hall at Carnegie Hall. It was the first time we ever played there. So she wrote this piece for us. Also on that concert, by the way, uh, uh, we did Howl with Allen Ginsberg, and we weren't asked back for a number of years. <laughs> I have to tell you that. I think they, they didn't know some of the words that Allen uh, had written into Howl, or maybe they didn't realize what, it, what they were getting into. But anyway, we had a great <laughs> And um, so we're going to play Sophia's piece, and um, from there we go to music of Gishi Wiley. Gishi Wiley is in my opinion, is one of America's greatest musicians on the basis of five songs that remain from her recorded legacy. Mm. We're going to play Last Kind Words, and it's one of the amazing 
iconic American pieces, I think. From there, we're going to go to a really recent piece by Wuman. And Wuman, as you might know, um, is, well, in my opinion, she's probably the greatest peepaw player uh, performing at this point. We've worked with Wuman since 1992. And, but never before have we worked with her as a composer. And we invited her to write one of our new pieces we're calling 50 for the Future. In this very first year, five women, five men writing new pieces. Over the next four years after this year, there, each year will be five new pieces by women, five new pieces by men. Amazing. And at the end of those five years, we're intending to have um, basically an entry point into the work that Kronos does. And this will be available online at the push of a button. Any young group or old group or any group in the entire world will be able to download the scores and the parts Brilliant. to these 50 pieces. Brilliant. And if we do our work correctly, um, those 50 pieces will give every player who's interested, every group who's interested, uh, an idea of how we do what we do hmm. and how much fun it is to be involved in music right now. And anyway, this first year, Wu Man has written her piece, and it's called Four Chinese Paintings. And so we're going to give the... Uh, actually, it's the American premiere of Four Chinese Paintings um, in Santa Barbara. Hmm. And from there, we're going to... have known? <laughs> What's I, that? Had no, I had no idea. Who would have known that this concert would be that important, the Santa Barbara concert? Amazing. Well, uh, you know, how often do you go to a concert and ends up being all guys and nobody <laughs> says anything about it? You know, it's like, uh, well, we decided to kind of do the same thing only in, can you say, in reverse <laughs> or in <laughs> the other side of the coin or something? I mean, you know, what do we say here? And anyway, after Wu Man, we're going to play music of Alexander Vrabelov. And this is a piece she wrote for us several years ago called Pannonia Boundless. And this has been played by, uh, this is kind of a precursor to the 50 for the future. And, and it might be that this piece kind of gave me the, the idea of it, really. Um, it's, it's a piece that's been played by groups all over the place. And um, it's fun to play. It's music from from taverns in Serbia, basically. It's tavern music. <laughs> and it's wild, and it's, uh, it's fun. Everybody has a solo, and everybody goes nuts. And uh, it's, uh, it's a terrific piece. And from there, we're going to music by Missy Mazzoli. And this is a piece called Harp and Altar. And basically, it's about the Brooklyn Bridge. And uh, mm, Sweet imagery. Yeah. Sweet imagery. Harp and Altar. From there, we go to music of Laurie Anderson. Um, it's a that piece one I can pronounce. Yeah. It's a piece <laughs> called Flow. And um, I remember uh, a few years ago, I heard this work on Laurie's album. And I'd been wanting Laurie to write for Kronos for 25 years. I called her up and I said, Laurie, you've finally written a Kronos piece. And, and uh, anyway, we got together and we played flow for her and after that then she began writing her uh, amazing work for us called Landfall so in, in a way flow was kind of the door opening to Landfall um, also a crazy combination of words flow, yes. Landfall yeah, <laughs> sorry that's right, yeah <laughs> and after, uh, we're going to end the first half of the show with music by Nicole Lise and Nicole wrote Death to Cosmisha a few years ago. It was her first piece for us. And uh, she's an amazing musician from Montreal. And Cosmisha, for those of you that don't know, is... Uh, Me too. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know at the time. I uh, learned later that Cosmisha was a form of East German pop music ah. in the 60s and 70s. Ah. And Nicole is one of those musicians that just has this voluminous knowledge about 
all kinds of interesting things. And she's the kind of person that used to take electronic instruments apart and then put them back together and it's <laughs> something that uh, she used to good effect in Death to Cosmosha because we're playing all kinds of uh, bizarre electronic instruments that uh, are playable by people like us so uh, uh, anyway that that's the first half of the show after that the second half opens with you mean after dinner second after half opens with second half yeah Opens with music by uh, Hildegard von Bingen, and you might have heard this. Take that way back, huh? Piece, yeah. yeah. You might have heard that on our early music album from 1997, I think it was. And and then we're going to close the concert with uh, one of our most recent works uh, that we premiered in Yerevan, Armenia, in uh, this past April, marking the hundred years since the beginning of the Armenian Genocide. And this is work by Mary Kuyumjin, and it's called Silent Cranes. And uh, it has uh, a most beautiful video component along with it. So um, Lovely. that's how we're going to end our show. Lovely. Yeah. Let me make sure I'm clear about a couple things. Are you saying this program is a first performance in Santa Barbara? Did uh, I misunderstand all, a little bit? No, of all of these pieces. None of these works have we ever played in Santa Barbara before. I see. Okay, That's gotcha. Gotcha, makes sense. Uh, can I t just take the clock back a tiny bit? You know, sure. I am proud, as I can be, all my life. I've done a couple things right. <laughs> One of them was to discover Kronos in Seattle long ago when I was young, when we were all young, uh, and I, I don't know how I did it, but somehow, did you pay for the airfare? I don't know, but I, I got you down to Santa Barbara, and I am proud as punch that I brought Kronos Quartet to Santa Barbara for the very first time in 73 to play George Crumb's incredible, I just forgot the title, tell me. Black Angels. Black Angels, of course. I think we, uh, we talked earlier, I think we had 23 people in the audience. Maybe. Nobody had a clue who you were. I'm proud as I can be about that. Well, what has happened since? Give us an overview of how quickly things changed and, and what what all that was about. Well, you know, interestingly, um, things don't change that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, you know, okay, we well they changed a little quickly. I mean, uh, so our first show was in November of. Um, uh, 1973. We had nine people in the audience at that concert. So if we had 23 in Santa Barbara, that that's uh, <laughs> what is that? We, we it's a triumph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's. And by it's, the way, those nine at the first concert were Santa Barbara relatives. Your aunts, your they uncles, your probably grandparents. Were. You know, they probably were. Isn't Santa Barbara the center of the universe? I mean, it, it, the weather is supposed to be the best there of anywhere. You know, so uh, <laughs> I won't tell anybody. Okay, that's it. Um, you know, basically, the work that Kronos has done has happened kind of one piece at a time. One thing leads to another. Um, I've never really been in a hurry uh, because I've always known that I that you know ever since I was a little kid I wanted to do music, and I have just kind of realized the world was going to have to get used to the fact that I wanted to do music. And I've been really lucky to have surrounding me people that felt the same way and feel the same way. And, you know, I've had a lot of support. Um, I think the last time you and I were talking, we were talking about naming of the group and how my wife and I, you know. That's uh, good, folks. Yeah, we got, we got out a candle and a bottle of wine and a great big piece of butcher paper and our uh, Greek and Roman mythological dictionary and started going through it and writing down the names that sounded right and felt right and seemed right. And uh, Regan, my wife, came across the god Kronos, spelled C-H-R-O-N-O-S. And, and, you know, the idea of time and chronicling and chronic and chronometer and all that, <laughs> it just kind of felt right to me and timeliness and uh, uh, but I thought it, the spelling needed a little work and so um, I think maybe I mentioned to you that 
you know, my parents said uh, they were subscribers to the Reader's Digest when I was a kid, and I remember reading in the Reader's Digest one time about how Kodak uh, arrived at the spelling of its name, and they paid an ad, an ad agency a whole bunch of money to tell them that a K was a more dramatic spelling than a CH. Can you imagine Kodak spelled C H O D A C H or whatever? <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just kind of remembered that in my memory, and uh, despite the wine, okay, it was the wine. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Uh, and I thought, okay, let's do. We'll do Kronos with a K. And I don't know if you know this, but it wasn't until I got to Santa Barbara and that concert that you presented. And afterwards, somebody from the classics department, one of the professors, came up to me and he said, "Do you know what Chronos means?" And I said, "Oh, sure, I do. You know, Chronos, the time and timeliness, and the you know um, <laughs> the unraveling and this unspinning of time, and you know all these things." And he said, "You got to be kidding me!" And he he said, "Actually, that Chronos was." He was the father of the gods, the one that ate all of his children except for Zeus, and then he got castrated, and he, and the remains were thrown in the ocean, and that became the fish, and and uh, <laughs> so there we are, you know. Boy, oh boy, that's more than Silk Road. We, I, I'm, good, I'm determined to get to Silk Road just basically because may I tell everyone? I think you would agree, you guys were the first Silk Road. You know what I mean? The oh. first understand people to understand this huge universe around us of great and marvelous music. Well, you know, musicians have been exploring for centuries. That that's that's what we do, you know. Everybody that's that's a part of the world of music is tries to keep their ears open. And you find something you like and you share it. That's that's what musicians do. And I've been really lucky to have People from all over the world suggesting things to me and bringing music to my attention that maybe I would never have heard before, and you know the the fact that um, that we've been able to work with people from so many different countries and um, backgrounds for me it's it's something that is is a really important part of being a musician and. You know, now in, in the time that we're all a part of and the, the, the immense uh, difficulties between peoples and between religions and cultures and languages, musicians have to step up to the plate even more now than ever before. And, you know, I was thinking earlier today about the uh, events in, in Paris and 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 then I, I had a meeting with a Mexican composer and he, this morning, and he said, "Every day of the year, things like that happen in Mexico. Every day." And then and then we were recalling, well, yeah. Well, and what about Charleston? And what about Lebanon the day before? And what about? We live in an incredibly violent and intolerant time, and everybody that's a part of music is attempting to create a counterbalance. I, I, I know that and I've never met a lazy musician in my life. You, you can't, you mm -hmm. just can't do that if you're going to be in music. It takes too much work yeah. and unfortunately uh, as, a, as a group we tend to be thought of as kind of uh, the culture tends to sideline us and I'm convinced the reason is uh, that somebody called it playing music and the powerful people think musicians are having too much fun because we're playing <laughs> and the fact is we are playing but we're also working at it a lot and uh, you know to music should seem like it's it flies out of the air and lands in the in the hearts and the ears and the spirits of people but it takes a lot of work to get it there and um, I'm very proud to be a part of the musical community and um, uh, there's so many things to do, you know, there's so many things and, and that can be done, you know. And for me, what I want to do, and, and I hope this concert will be a part of that, is bring to the attention of our audience just some of the things that, 
that can be can happen in a concert in a musical situation yeah. it's uh it, it's just uh it's a thrill to be able to to do this and um I feel like Kronos is just getting started. I mean, isn't it, that amazing? Yeah, it's taken yeah. forty-two years to get to the point where I'm talking to you right now today. But I, uh, man, I need every minute I can get. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, the the uh, interesting thing. I'll just touch on it briefly. We got to kind of wind it down here. But I'm whatever sixty-seven going on sixty-eight. I feel. I think you might agree with me uh, that the older I get, the better I finally come to understand this amazing art form that we work with. I finally understand a Beethoven symphony. I finally really? get how things well, work. You're lucky because I don't have this. <laughs> I, I know less about music than I ever have and yet I love it maybe more than I ever have but if I had to tell somebody what does it mean I don't you know. Yeah but inside come on now inside maybe, your, maybe head's, in, your head's no, working all the time you've got it going. Inside is you know you come to kind of um uh, well, like like dealing with the violin, for example. For me, dealing with the violin is something that is is an eternal challenge. The violin always wins. There's no point in arguing with it. It <laughs> always wins, and I've come to understand that. And that's my understanding of music. The violin wins. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. I you know I try to get along with it as much as I can, but it ultimately. You know, it has a life of its own. I hate to be so flip after such a heady uh, uh, monologue, but <clears throat> tell me true. Do you guys once in a blue moon, you know, pull down the blinds, sneak into a back room and play Mozart quartets? Um, no, we don't, but let me tell you something. Uh, let me tell you something. We, after all of these uh, years, we have been invited to play at the Esterhazy Palace uh, outside of Vienna. It's about 30 miles outside of Vienna. I've, I've been there before. I wanted to kind of check the heartland of the string quartet and just find out what it felt like there. But the uh, Kronos has never played there. And we're going to be mentoring some young Austrian quartets. And then we're giving a concert in the, the large hall at the Esterhazy Palace and just yesterday, I went over to Amoeba Records, and I purchased a few LPs of Haydn quartets. And I, I'm, I have this idea. Don't tell anybody, okay? I, but I have this idea. Yeah, okay. Uh, that maybe some of those groups we're mentoring will become DJs for us, and they will play Haydn outside the open doors of the Esterhazy Palace while we're doing something else. And. Mm. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll let, let you know. Let alone, uh, somehow, the, uh, how shall I put it discreetly, the, the repertoire that you perform, I'm trying to balance that with the high baroque interior of the Esterhazy Palace. I'm trying to right. figure out whether glass will be shattered, whether artifacts will be destroyed. I mean, it could be really something. <laughs> you know, I'm, I feel very comfortable in the fact that every day since I started Kronos, I've, I've said my little uh, thoughts to um, uh, Haydn. And I, you know, I think if, if you can imagine that, that this guy basically created an art form in that place, and he just, he just expanded, you know, he, he just stayed there and got bigger and bigger. And what a, what a wonderful thing. What an amazing thing. And to be able to bring back to that kind of center point some of the variations that his creation allowed Brilliant. to me is just such a huge um, wonderful thing to be able to do I, I can't wait to go there and I'm going to raise some hell but don't tell anybody that either. <laughs> I've never heard such a brilliant explanation for what you're going to do in Haydn's uh, back bedroom <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing listen David Harrington many many thanks uh, David My Harrington pleasure violinist founder Kronos Quartet we go back long 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 time let me give the details anybody who's watching this in Southern California you just absolutely cannot possibly not want to hear this performance especially the Santa Barbara performance Thursday night come on up you do the dinner early in beautiful Santa Barbara you go to Campbell Hall it's perfect here are the details one last time Kronos Quartet an amazing program as described which I still can't pronounce 
uh, except except for one or two. Uh, Thursday, this Thursday, I'm going to put this video up immediately all over Southern California. Thursday, November 19th, seven o'clock. It's an early start time, so you know, get up, have a late, have, get up here early. Uh, but also, the, you're, they're playing throughout. Uh, where else are you playing? I still can't find that info. Where are, in, in the Southern uh, California area? We're playing at UCLA on. That's right. Yeah, Roy, Rice Hall. On uh, what is that? The 18th, the night before. Yeah. The night before. Yeah. yeah. So Wednesday night, the giant, huge that I remember very well from my youth, Royce Hall, Cronus Quartet, and then they come up Thursday, uh, November 19th, and play at Campbell Hall, UCSB. Tickets dirt cheap, 10 bucks to 40. Give me a break. Uh, program is exciting. Phone number in Santa Barbara for tickets for the Campbell Hall concert. Area code is 805-893-3535. David Harrington, what a hoot! <laughs> you know, I knew the knew the other players of the original Kronos a whole lot better than you. You were off meditating, I presume, uh, something like that. Yeah, well, I've never really meditated, but I've tried to think about things a little bit, you know. <laughs> anyway, great pleasure. Thanks so much for giving me some time. I really can't wait to see you Thursday. My pleasure. I'll okay. see you then, Dan. Right on. Okay. Right. Bye.